that. <laughs> like, who the fuck wrote that shit? Like, oh. Uh... All right, this is first class trolling. I give you that. You hit everything to get the attention of a certain class of person, which would be me, of course. I am deeply familiar with Harlan Ellison's work. How familiar am I? Well, I have Ned Sagaloff's A Lit Fuse, which tells everything about how problematic he was. I talked to him on the phone several times when he was alive. So I know Harlan Ellison. I know that the guy was a complete fucking lunatic uh, who had his own fucking demons and who got angry at everyone, even the people who were trying to help him, but who also did a lot of solids for many people under the radar. But this is about the arts, and I can say that City on the Edge of Forever still fucking gets me in the gut. You don't understand how groundbreaking it was to not only have this beautiful romantic story within a time travel episode, which he won the Hugo for, for his unproduced teleplay because it got changed by Roddenberry. To do that and make it successful television, which may be a little too melodramatic for your tastes, shows how little you understand and how closed and needlessly cynical you are to a certain, shall we say, 1960s, 1970s strain that we could learn a few things from. So I did see some people giving you pushback, which is great. I did see some people in your comments who say, I love City on the Edge of Forever, unironically. And I will join them. I think it's a moving ep episode. But maybe you have never experienced love. Maybe you have never experienced that soul-crushing moment when you have to let someone go. That's what that episode is about. And goddamn, if that isn't a burden on Captain Kirk's shoulders, it's the only time he swore on Star Trek, let's get the hell out of here. It's an achievement. It's a masterpiece of television, and you are a fool.